All right, so let's continue this like second part of the session. I'm going to present our project, Helix Mesh, which is mm, messaging with temp or proof timestamp. So we're like to Ethereum as a Twitter to Facebook. So basically like plain messaging, but delivering the uh, minimal value that we can think of. So like as uh, the first question that typically like I ask uh, myself when I like listen to some people, like why should I care? Like why, why, how is it different from what I already know? Um, and um, here, uh, here is like our train of thought that like Bitcoin and Ethereum are really designed for financial transactions and like very very adverse environments, uh, like censorship at the government level, uh, like very robust, like but kind of slow. And it was never the case that people will actually store data there. Uh, so the second uh, idea is that many industry use cases do not actually uh, need all the power uh, of the smart contracts. So it's like, uh, think of Redis, like very fast, very slim uh, database against like Oracle DB or like some, um, uh, I don't know, enterprise grade uh, things. Uh, so if you, for example, need something uh, uh, like a uh, proof of concept or like some pilot, you don't really need like all the things. And what is more important, you actually need to iterate as fast as possible. That's why, uh, for example, you typically have some components which are, for example, like centralized and like easy to deploy. And you just like want to test one single feature and then reiterate and like get a feedback. And uh, you don't really want to commit to everything and like put everything on a big like fat platform. And so the idea is that like we take minimal uh, viable use case like a value proposition from the blockchains uh, and optimize everything for it. And in our case, uh, it's actually a time stamping. So I didn't talk uh, much about the blockchain, but Satoshi Nakamoto actually didn't even use uh, the term blockchain in the famous uh, Bitcoin white paper. Actually, he managed that he said that is a time stamping chain. And this is actually one of the cool features of Bitcoin that uh, actually you have approximately the same uh, time between the blocks. And since uh, you cannot change the history uh, of the transactions, whenever you put into the block is tamper proof and you cannot change it afterwards. Uh, so in a nutshell, what we are offering is tamper proof time stamping for tons of messages. So basically, we optimize for high throughput. We strip off all the things related to smart contracts, like to um, uh, like uh, Bitcoin script things and all the uh, things related to finance. We just uh, take bare bone data and uh, with trivial validations. Um, so let's get back to the trade-offs and like uh, think what kind of trade-offs we. Uh, choose for ourselves, so plan is the yeah, safety. Uh, in our case, we choose safety in the times that even if we have a network partition, we still like keep uh, making the timestamps, even though uh, if the, we have like a fork in the network, uh, the timestamps will be generated on each of the forks, and then the reconciliation uh, will require. Uh, like a um, basically social consensus surface agreement how to reconcile. But as long as the small fork uh, is uh, not uh, like super big in terms of community wise, eventually it should uh, submerge into the big one. This uh, is the same trade off as the Bitcoin. If you have uh, like two forks, the longer always wins. So basically, this is the same uh, line as we're using Bitcoin. Um, Open access, again, easier and less normal. So, um, this is like a hard question. So, uh, in the long run, we want to have an open access, but at the bootstrap thing, uh, we want to have uh, proof of authority and manually onboard startups and businesses who will run uh, our full nodes. And this is how we will uh, gain the initial uh, traction and adoption. 
uh, just because when people can experiment and think and uh, um, run our infrastructure, uh, they eventually will see the value. Or, uh, and uh, simplicity is expressiveness. Um, so here, again, uh, we don't want to have smart contracts and all the fancy stuff here, just because uh, not, so first of all, it is uh, much harder to get uh, high throughput and implement things, but also even uh, if for some reason you can manage like a million TPS on a smart contract platform, the logical complexity uh, will actually hurt for you to uh, iterate and reevaluate use cases because uh, if for example you put all your business logic on the smart contract and it turns out that your initial hypothesis and like this and all doesn't work, you have to pretty much everything builds from scratch and the iteration models are going to be uh, much longer because you cannot simply delete the smart contract some of it from the uh, network. Uh, while if you have a small granular pieces and very thin uh, components, you can combine them much easily. So that's why we offer this like very thin super layer with uh, uh, messaging, with just only messaging and just like time sending things. Uh, okay, so back uh, to the protocol. Um, and I started to explain uh, the uh, classical protocol, consensus protocol approach is that um, you have this uh, network setup and everyone is uh, broadcasting transactions and updates and uh, then you have uh, basically a leader or a king who grabs all the transactions that he has and says, okay guys, I am the king, here is like my uh, start VIP update which I declare final right now, everyone should get it and apply to their database. So um, this is uh, how basically proof of stake works in many systems, like even proof of work um, with some modifications. But the whole idea that first you get uh, transactions spread out in the network and then you get some finalized block uh, that you put into the, uh, your local database. And this is very an optimal way to uh, deal with large amounts of data uh, and much more efficient setup would be if uh, we have something like this. So you have different nodes This is like your network here. All of the networks, all, all, all of the nodes, like put the data into this, and then, like for example, this is T1, this is T2, right? and this basically all the contributions are put together and sealed. And uh, the point is that once you aggregate this data at the node level, in this case it is not necessary like even to broadcast it to everyone as long as you can uh, assure that this data is available in my node. And this will have massive implications in terms of like network bandwidth. Uh, the, uh, on the other hand, there are like, lots of problems uh, with respect to the like transaction ordering uh, and everything, so we cannot get um, as expressive and robust and Turing complete as the original blockchain model, but in our case, it just like is not needed because we just want to have a single like timestamp here. But if this happened approximately it was first January like 2020, and that's it, and all this blocks in the direct. So this motivates our choice to adopt the DAG. Uh, directly the cyclic graph and the internal data structure. So we're going to uh, even more into details. So blockchain is basically a tree when you have the global ordering. So this is your like, first transaction, this is your second transaction, this is your third transaction, and so on. 
And in order to update this tree, uh, you can add <coughs> only a single place to add. And for example, if I have two transactions and I want to simultaneously apply this, uh, I cannot do like this, right? Because if I can always have only a single line. These two things are going to be in conflict, even though logically they can, they, 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 they are not. But on the dark thing, uh, basically you have all this stuff interconnected, and you have multiple places instead of a single one where you can attach the new transaction here. And this is exactly uh, why having a DAG is uh, convenient when you have lots of writes occurring uh, simultaneously. So basically, uh, it's like you have a bunch of updates coming in the same thing, and you want to apply them in some random order, and you don't even know yet that these uh, are going to be finalized, but you kind of tentatively apply all of them at the moment. And all of them eventually uh, will be accepted. Uh, in contrast, with this model, when you have like uh, three competing branches, only one uh, will survive. So that motivates uh, the idea to have a more, uh, uh, so, so to, to have a data structure which supports concurrent rights, but it doesn't uh, give you a natural way of global ordering. In our case, we just don't need global ordering, and this is like our design decision. But on the other hand, uh, you can have uh, partial ordering on the DAG if you have uh, if you organize it in the same way. So you have, for example, like a Genesis transaction, and you have uh, all the transactions uh, at the at distance one from this. And for example, you have transactions at distance 2 from this, and so on. And uh, you can say that this is round 1, this is round 2, here is like round 3, and so on. And you can see that this transactions go after this transaction. So you have ordering uh, at the round level at the aggregated level. And as long as you can have the time stamping property on the rounds, similar to how you have time stamping pro properties in the blockchain, so then you can ensure that this is, is like approximately 10 seconds apart, you will attest and time stamp all the stuff which goes on here, even though you don't have a canonical ordering of the transactions uh, within the layer. Um, so, how it smashes the data structure that we use and the, uh, uh, the way that we synchronize these decks uh, is based on uh, two uh, papers. So, the one is the um, Smash Cash back, uh, published back in 2017 as an attempt to scale Bitcoin. Uh, and they actually introduced uh, the uh, idea of blood that and many things I uh, come back later and a uh, more modern development of Snowball uh, it's, a more, it's a new way to concept protocols which are leaderless and they do not require and they are uh, combined with the peer-to-peer -peer distribution um, which uh, makes it very robust because you have uh, because you have network gossiping uh, combined with the decision itself. Okay, so let's first start with like um, mesh cache framework. Actually, it's not uh, really like a single, like the B protocol, but actually it's a family of protocols, like a framework uh, where you can plug in uh, multiple components. And the idea is that you have two processes run simultaneously. One is fast, another is slow. And um, they call it tortoise and hare protocol. And uh, uh, you can implement uh, tortoise. So tortoise is basically 
uh, something that they give. Well, here is an overlay protocol that you can uh, implement uh, based on your own implementation. So, okay. So what is actually tortoise? So you take uh, this DAX structure. Uh, so this is your like local view of DAX. And whenever you have an incoming bundle that you attach to the tangle, uh, attach to the DAX, um, you uh, observe uh, a special vote which actually indicates on which previous bundles uh, this uh, node deems valid. And also, if you publish yourself an update, you put a vote which tells like, which of the previous bundles uh, you deem valid. Uh, the validity is actually based uh, just on the timestamp and the availability of the data within this update if um, you actually put a lot of data uh, in this chunk. Uh, so the point is that you make this decision uh, not immediately, but after like some time passes, which is called decision period. And this uh, time buffer uh, is suffices not only like to get all the data back in like say uh, like five minutes. So then uh, you will uh, you it makes you uh, confident that all the data is in here uh, is synchronized with all your neighbors. And also uh, when it's time to vote, you have make you like you have um, you have uh, yourself. Uh, confidence on what and how actually you are going to work. Because, for example, if uh, I just like uh, want to vote straight away, I may not even see all the candidates that they get. But since there is a time buffer here, I know uh, with high confidence that all the stuff in here uh, is uh, what I'm going to vote for. And, and at that point, I already know like my decision. Uh, the, the crucial part here is that these votes are ingrained in the uh, in the blocks, like uh, in the parts that I uh, have in my ledger. So it means that the voting comes in on chain. So basically, just looking at the ledger and the whole data structure, like an, uh, no matter uh, which node, I can infer the validity of each node without any additional information. Pretty much like in Bitcoin, if I give you a chain and the proof of work chain, uh, there is no additional information in order to attest validity because basically you just uh, see the length of the node, uh, you see the, like, the proof of work difficulty, and that's enough. Uh, and uh, the same mechanics work here, so uh, you have negative and positive votes, and they stick up, and if something uh, everyone agrees on there will be a high positive vote if something that uh, everyone agrees uh, everyone doesn't agree is going to be a large negative vote and after some time the process uh, will stabilize so positive nodes positive accumulated votes will get higher positive negative votes will get lower and that's why just looking at the thresholds is enough. So the problem here, the same as in Bitcoin, is that you have to wait for uh, many confirmations before the threshold uh, will accumulate. And uh, you can actually prove that no matter like how people vote, uh, it, will, it will always stabilize, either on the negative side or the positive side. But it will require perhaps a very long time. Uh, and uh, there is also a uh, tiebreaker mechanics based on the common random bits, but I'm not going to dig into detail. So the, the uh, moral here is that this tortoise protocol is completely on-chain, so basically think of it as a sort of uh, modification of Bitcoin to the deck, but it requires quite a lot of time uh, before it actually gives you the output. 
which is uh, kind of not desirable. Uh, and that's why you have a second process run simultaneously, which actually predicts the outcome of the uh, Torges protocol. So basically, even before uh, all this round passes and all the uh, voting, uh, all the votes will stay up, uh, you have sort of exit polls asking your random peers, like, how are you going to vote, like, preliminarily uh, for all of the, down, all, all of the uh, blocks in the current round. They may not even have a decision yet, so they are like trying to uh, get a decision ourselves, like, okay, maybe that, maybe that. Uh, but since you're asking multiple uh, peers, like, for example, I ask like randomly 10 of my neighbors, another 10 of my neighbors, and if it turns out that every time I ask someone to say, um, you know, I wanna go I, I, for that guy and that guy, okay, I wanna go also for that guy. If you, for example, 10 times in a row you have, this, you have the same answer, you say, okay, this guy is going to win, so I will uh, vote for him as well. So that's why uh, even before like, any process of exchanging uh, like messaging or making the deck happens, you already know, okay, this guy is going to win. It's like in the real world, if you have an election and you have exit polls, and uh, you exit polls give you, okay, so 90% of our respondents said that Trump will win, I don't know, then with high confidence he will win. Uh, but if, for example, the polls say, okay, we've asked 100 people, uh, 53 said Trump, and uh, like 49 like, said, uh, for 47, uh, said Clinton, then you actually cannot decide, and then we have to wait for the final results, and even though it may be on the breaking. So, and this is the case here as well. So, if uh, originally it happens that uh, pretty much most of the nodes agree, it will converge to the agreement pretty fast. But if the uh, initial uh, bias is near split, the process of like exchanging uh, tips, like how are you going to vote, can be very indecisive, and then you have to vote for the tortoise. But this is exactly what we want from the oracle. As long as it gives you the answer yes, we are sure it is yes. But it also may say that, okay, I'm not sure. In this case, you can do nothing, you just like, wait until the like, official resolution happens. The beauty of the thing is that, first, it's very fast. Most of the time it converges pretty fast, and also uh, it scales uh, to uh, thousands of nodes just because of this uh, lack of leader for which you rely. Basically, you sample a fixed number of peers, uh, no matter how many nodes are in the network. But that's why even if you have a thousand nodes, you always sample a small uh, neighborhood, like a ten peers, and you ask them. Since this sample is random, uh, making 10 times the small sample is enough to make sure that the consensus is global. This, I think, is a very beautiful idea. And it was, um, uh, I think it was in, in, in like, uh, known in statistical physics basically in 70s, but it was uh, discovered and popularized by the Team Rocket team and Avalanche. Uh, and in particular, this case, like a, a binary consensus. Is snowball, uh, and this is what we put out nowadays. This avalanche is something different. Uh, so this is like an illustration uh, how exactly this will happen. So we have uh, basically a swarm of nodes, and uh, you can even allow people to leave uh, and join the network as long as this churn is not very uh, hard. But as long as you like keep sampling and asking about the vote on something, uh, you will pretty uh, most of the time you will converge to a single consensus pretty quickly. And this uh, will actually give you the answer like what you put uh, when it will 
the time to like make an official commitment to vote by sealing in seniority later on. But at that point, most of the time, you will already know that, okay, I'm going to vote the same way as others. So that's why uh, the thresholds were sum up pretty quickly to large either negative or positive values. Uh, okay, I think this is uh, more or less uh, what I wanted to uh, talk about in this like very like shallow introductory level. And uh, if you really want to go into like details and technical details, uh, let's consult our.